Hi, welcome to Gear Garage. My name is Zach, and this is my little show about whitewater stuff. And today I want to talk about sweet boats, the Idaho sweet boat that a lot of you have seen on the Middle Fork of the Salmon. Uh, it's a job. I get to run a sweet boat on the Middle Fork for four seasons, and I got to do one a few weeks ago. I took some video. I thought I'd share some of that with you and some of my thoughts about the boat. And, you know, there's people who have done it for 20 years who really do that boat, who are still doing it, that know a lot more than I do. I just want to share kind of like my experience on it and what I think about it. And uh, first of all, the idea of a sweep boat is that you have these big, long sweep arms that connect up. The sweep blades are like this big that you run down the bow in the stern of the boat. So instead of rowing a boat side by side, you have these two sweep blades in the bow and the stern. And they steer the boat. And they can, you can push on them or pull on them to move the boat a little bit laterally one way or the other. But mainly you're steering and kind of snaking your way down the river. And they require generally current. You need some sort of a continuous current. If there's a big flat spot, you're going to not go very fast. You're, you're just going the speed of the current, and if there's wind, you're going to stop and maybe go back upstream. So historically, these have been used in Europe. They were used on the Mississippi. And in the late, late 1800s, they made their way to Idaho, and there were boats that were manufactured in the town of Salmon, Idaho, out of wood. They were built out of wood with two sweep arms with sweep blades. And one person would run each one. So on these original ones in Idaho, the one person held on to one of these sweep arms with two hands, the other person with the other two hands, and they would together maneuver the boat down the main salmon. And they were, they were going down river to carry supplies or wood or whatever from salmon to somewhere else. And they obviously couldn't get back up. And the, these, these boats were making one-way journeys, and all the wood from the boat, everything in the boat was just left at wherever their destination was and sold or they did whatever they did with it. And that's why the Salmon River got the, the moniker River of No Return because these boats went from Salmon downstream and the boats never came back. They were on a one-way journey. And, and then from the, um, the main Salmon, these went to the Middle Fork once the Middle Fork was starting to be boated in the 30s and 40s and they kind of, the idea of this boat made its way there. And uh, Russians have done something similar. The Plot, the Plot is a similar boat they did this to run a lot of the big water rivers of Siberia. And on those boats, they had two people on each sweep arm. So two people here facing each other, two people on the other end. And they would steer these boats down big water continuous rivers. And, and I wish I had some video to share because it's crazy the stuff they would run. and But how well they would run it on these big boats. So uh, these boats made their way to the Middle Fork. And a lot of the boats were made by, the early boats were made by Goodyear or, uh, and then Dib, Dib Marine Inflatable Boats, which still exist on the Middle Fork. And more commonly, recently they've been made by Sotar, Moravia has made some, Air has made some. Uh, but the one that I ran was a Dib, and those Dibs are 30 years old and still going strong. Just really amazingly well made and uh, still able to repair them pretty easily. So Dib is, I personally think Dib is the best. And there's two styles. There's what they call a round boat or a bucket boat, which is just like a raft with a, with a non-self-bailing floor. Or there's um, a pontoon boat, which is basically a cataract. Two big tubes with a frame in the middle. And they both have different advantages and disadvantages. I, I hear generally the pontoon boats run better, but I've never run one to say. Um, may, mainly because you can pontoon rocks. You can take those two tubes and go right over a rock, where in the, in the the rafts and the bucket boats, it's a little bit harder to do that, although you can. You can still do that even in the round boats or the bucket boat versions. So on the Middle Fork, you know, they're used a lot because uh, the river is continuous and it's not super hard. It's class three, a little bit of class four, so the boat can make it down these rapids, but there's current the entire way. They're not done as commonly on the main salmon anymore because they move really slow in the flat parts. And they're really cool boats. You can put most of the camp gear on them. You can put, you know, everybody's dry bags on them. You can put a ton of stuff on them. And you basically, on these ones, it's one person running both sweeps, unlike the old ones on the Salmon River or the Russian Plots. And one person can just row them. And I don't think I, you row them as much as you pilot them. Sweep boat people like to be called pilots or drivers or captains instead of guides. So you've got to be careful to call them the right terminology or they get a little, little fussy sometimes. But you, you drive this thing instead of guide it. And it's just one person pushing on both of them, pulling on them, and you're using your whole body standing up. And it's a really unique way to run a boat. And they, they work remarkably well. I don't entirely understand the physics behind it. I, don't, I can't really explain why they do things. 
But to run them, it really helps to be big and strong because they're it's a big boat. Uh, and also, you have to be really good at uh, understanding tracking because most of what you're doing is pointing that boat and going there. You know, you just point it, go somewhere, and then you turn it and go somewhere else. And you're just kind of making your way down the river. With power, you can push on both the sweeps or pull and move the boat laterally, laterally a little bit, which helps. But this, this boat is all about setting up way early and really understanding your track and momentum. Now, but beyond that, I really don't know how to explain how they work. They just work. And they're a lot of fun. I wish I could run them on more rivers. I've heard of people taking them on the Rogue and the Oahe and the Bruno. But it's not like a really common thing here in the U.S. Uh, but they are fun boats, and uh, I, hopefully this video somewhat demystified how they work, although I doubt it. Um, but at least, you know, explains kind of what they're about. Um, if you have more questions, add questions in the comment section down below. Uh, here on YouTube, there's like a little comment part, just add a comment down there. Uh, or if you've run them before, a lot of you have run these things for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Maybe you have more experience, and you'd love to add in how you think that they work better. Or maybe I some something I missed, but they're really unique boats, and um, I'm just excited to share a little bit about them with you. Uh, that's it for this episode. See you next time.